Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. This week I'm going to paint something quite different. Um, on my Patreon channel I painted a beautiful scene with kind of a red umbrella with some lovely reflections and I got some great feedback from that. So I'm going to, for my uh, regular YouTube channel, I'm going to paint something with a red umbrella with reflections in the water and some ripples, some little ripples in the water next to the umbrella, um, a, an, an umbrella upside down in the water bright red splash of paint on the canvas and it's just very eye-catching i think it's a quite a simple scene but it's very very eye-catching and i think it would make a beautiful piece of art for a wall so i'm going to paint that for you today something different um we did this on on patreon something similar on patreon with a red umbrella as well uh it turned out fantastic if you want to see it just pop over the page and have a quick look and see what you think i think there's a preview up there for you so we're going to do that today something different uh we'll skip a landscape this week and we'll move on to something i won't say it's abstract abstract it's just a simple scene but it's really really eye-catching and it packs a punch so i thought why not just a handful of colors just i wanted one two three four five six colors that's all we need really so let's try it and have a bit of fun i hope you enjoy the video everyone thank you so much for watching okay let's do this just a reference photograph there you should see it around there somewhere isn't that just lovely? It's a very simple scene, but look, you may think it's complicated with all these ripples and stuff going on, but I'm going to simplify it for you. I'm going to just try and keep it simple. And I think the key with painting something like this is just strong shadows and bright highlights. You see this black shadow reflection we have? That's very black. And against the bright, it really stands out, doesn't it? So let's just try it and keep it simple. And let's just have a bit of fun. That's why we're here, my friends, to have a bit of fun. I'll tell you what colours I have. Titanium white, a little Naples yellow. Um, I might not even need Naples yellow, to be quite honest. So I've cadmium yellow pale, cadmium red, magenta, lamp black, and phthalo blue. I would say that's all we need. Um, a nice simple palette nice and simple let's start i'm going to just now i did a sketch a quick sketch of the umbrella here just very loosely i wasn't being perfect with the sketch and i'm going to start up at the top here with that bright so take a damp brush take some white and let's take a touch of phthalo blue tiny 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 touch now that's even too much you see how strong phthalo blue is it's a very strong strong color it really overpowers your paint if you're not careful so a tiny tiny bit of that and i'm going to take a tiny touch of magenta just to give it a little bit of warmth up in that corner up there because even the highlights in this there's a little bit of a pinky even around here you can see on the photograph if you check the photograph now on the reference photographs that i have a link there for and you zoom in you kind of see there's a hint of a pinkyish color here and there in the photograph so i'm going to add just tiny touches of magenta into some of the color and I, again i don't want to go too blue with this it's not blue i'm after it's kind of a pinky gray so let's take a touch of black and again touch of magenta and let's see okay that's not bad i'm i'm happy enough with that and what i'm going to do is you see the way I sketched all of this, this is just for my own reference for the umbrella. But what I'm going to do is just paint over all of this pencil. Paint right over all the pencil. Don't be afraid. I'm going to put some nice bright white along the edge of the umbrella here. So it's nice and bright. And again, I'm going to pick up some more of the white and I'm going to go along the edge around by the shadow and the reflection sorry of the umbrella as well i want that nice and bright very very bright and simply fill that in come on let's fill it in we can brighten up again as we need um okay i'm going to take some more white touch of thinners again just a touch of thinners um again a touch of blue i'm going to come down here so just sit back and look at the reference photograph and what you'll notice is a lot of bright whitey grey around the umbrella 
just all around your mouth. That's very bright, isn't it? Scraping that along. Very loose, nice and loose. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, you no, know, be honest, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of blue in this. Um, what I see, and you know, it's true what they say. Just paint what you see. What I see is like a pinkish grey coming through. So I'm taking some magenta and some black. And I'm going to stay away from the blue just for now. And I'm going to put a hint of that sort of pinky grey just around here. Again, I don't want too much of this. It's just a hint. And then, with that done, I'm just going to go into some black. And a little white. Just keep adding what you need until you feel you have the colour you want. Black and white. Um, I'll take a touch of magenta. Just a touch. Tiny touches at a time. And I'm going to soften this colour up on the left hand side. Up there. Don't worry about making a mess of all of this. If you think you're going wrong somewhere, look, we can fix it. Don't worry about that. We can fix all of these things. It's just a painting. We can fix it. Okay, a little bit more of that grey. And you can see I'm putting on a very thin layer and I'm dragging the paint around the canvas. I don't want to fill the canvas with paint too soon because it gets very messy. So I'm just covering the white of the canvas with this thin layer of paint. And let me have a look now, you see. Let's have a look. So I'm going to take a soft brush, a very soft blender brush. I'm just going to soften all of this. Go down by the brightness first and then soften it into the grey. Make it lovely and soft all the way across, side to side. There we go, nice and soft. This is kind of typically now the first layer, if you will. Um, I call this the undercoat. All right, uh, coming from a painter background, I just tend to call these the undercoats, and then I start working thicker and stronger paint on top of these. So now, with my dry brush, I'm taking some black, a hint of magenta. So we have a nice kind of a blacky pink, um, but there's still a touch of blue in the color. I can see a touch. A tiny, tiny touch of blue in the colour as well. It's funny when painting, when you look at one colour, you can see so many different shades of that colour. Uh, that's what I love about painting. So I'm going to put that nice dark colour, a bit of pink. The pink just warming up the canvas. I want to put that colour just in here where it's dark down at the corner. And I don't want to overdo this dark colour either. So I'm going to bring it across and just leave this fade upwards like that. Just leave a fade away. There we go. And soften it out at the edges. Soften it across. Again, we'll soften this now with our soft brush as well. Um, okay, so soft brush. Let's soften this. Just where they meet, I just want to make it nice and soft. Just go around in the random directions. Nice and soft. And I need to clean my brush because it's getting quite dirty. Just on a bit of tissue. Just give it a quick, a quick rub just to keep it clean. And let's go back in and soften all of this. I want nice, soft shapes. I don't want to see lots of lines on this. So I'm really softening this out. Go down as well, up and down. That just helps spread the paint and make it nice and soft, you see? I'll have a fine job trying to clean this blender brush in a minute. I'll have a great job. It'll be very, very tough. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back in here 
with a slightly smaller brush and just brighten that area. I'm taking some white and a little touch of magenta. I just want to brighten up in along there. And then I'm just gently going to soften it out. Just gently. That little kind of bright glow that we have just by the umbrella, it's really nice. Okay, don't worry about getting this absolutely perfect again. So from here on, we're just going to focus on ripples. We're going to focus on creating ripples in the water. And you would look at that photograph and think it's very complicated. I'm never going to be able to paint something like that. That is very, very complicated for me. But let me show you how I would approach this in an easy way. I'm going to start with the softer ripples and slowly work towards the smaller detailed ones. So the softer ripples, let's start with those. I'm going to take a brush. Um, I want to get a nice flat brush now for this. And the problem with me is that most of my brushes tend to be kind of worn brushes like this. I rarely have very fine flat brushes. So for that reason, let me just... I'm looking around here now on my table to see what I can find to suit this. I want a flattish kind of a brush. This one will do, look. It's not too bad. Any kind of small flat brush that you have with a nice point on it will do fine. The trick with this is to bring some darks out into the light and bring some lights back out in and back into the dark. It simply circles, all right? I'm going to start with the one just here. Can you see this one? And I'm not going to copy that reference photograph exactly. It's just um, it's just something for me to look at for shapes. I'm not going to try and copy every detail. I'm going to start with some dark. Okay. Now, this dark color we made earlier will be absolutely perfect for that. So let's make a bit of that. Some black and a little magenta. I think that's all we need. And a bit of white. We want to go... A nice dark, dark shade. I'm going to mix up plenty of this now. Plenty, plenty of this. And I'm going with thicker paint. Um, you could say it's probably just paint on its own. There's no thinners in this. So I'm going to say that. It's just paint. But I have a very limited amount on the tip of my brush. I'm just going to take a little bit on the tip of my brush. And in fact, I'm going to go darker. They look a little bit darker to me, actually. There we go. Now, a dark grey. I'm going to start bringing lines like that, and then we have one that comes up like that, and they kind of meet, don't they? And it's simply, the nice thing about the oils is that the colour mixes in with the background as you're painting, which I love. That creates lovely soft kind of lines with varying shades of colour. You see the way it just kind of softens in and disappears. I like that. I'm going to come down here now and put another one. And they don't need to be full circles. You can see the way I'm stopping a little bit. And then I'll continue on. Soften that out. And they're slowly getting less and less and less. Thinner and thinner and thinner. And lighter as they come away. So you can see what's happening. I'm picking up the lighter colour and I'm bringing it across. And that lighter colour is acting as my actual ripple as I bring across. You see what I mean? Um, it's, it's difficult to explain, but you know when you're doing it. And we're going to be softening all of this as well. So don't worry about getting this just perfect. Um, now, so look, already we have the basis of some of our ripples already. And what I like to do is make some of them thicker. 
like this and then lift off and I think that gives a nice little impression so what I'm going to do next is let me just get my soft blender brush very soft brush a makeup brush or something and I'm going to just go over these in that direction look around in a semicircle and I just want to soften them outwards slightly just at the edge first soften them away and that gives you a little bit of depth and then move in to these ones don't worry about making a little bit of a mess that's absolutely fine so I, I do the darker shades first and then I move on to lighter shades so then what I do is I want to just take a little round brush like this and I'm simply going to get some white with a little touch of the pink tiny tiny touch of that pink but it's mostly white I have and this touch of pink will make this white very bright and luminous and really catch your eye so I want to go along on top of some of those and just do that okay remember it's on the top so it's on so the light is coming from overhead like this across so all these highlights are going to be on the top side of the dark you see what I mean just like that and take your time just have, try to have a bit of fun with this because we're learning for me it's all about this learning trying something different and it's amazing what you discover as you're painting it really is So let me get some more of that colour and I'm going to go in here and just add, maybe just add a little couple of lights flicking around. Remember what you're doing here now, everything is in the shape of a circle. Alright? Everything, it's all in the shape of a circle. But it's a very oblong, oblong circle. It's almost like, um, it's sort of almost like the shape of an egg type of a thing, you know? So just remember that. As it comes across, it gets kind of wider and then it cuts back in. But again, look, don't try to be perfect with this. I'm going to go up high now and go with a couple of big strides like that. Bring a few in. You see, it's just about... giving the impression of the ripples disappearing out of the painting. You see the way they kind of disappear as they go up like that. So I'm again, I'm going to just soften these, soften them outwards, follow it around, soften them away. And let them disappear almost sort of in the center like that you see just leave everything soft and around together so how's that looking now this is still very early we can add well I'm going to be adding some nice rich darks into all of this as well so let me show you how I'm going to add a couple of darks into this you see the very dark ones we have there's a couple of really dark 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 um, bits of ripple in this don't we so I'll just take a dark color a bit of black a bit of magenta and maybe a touch of blue Do you know uh, make it what you like so you see we have some really nice darks going in here don't we like that one or two just sort of popping in and popping out that's kind of what they're doing aren't they the popping in and popping out. But I find with this, um, the trick is not to go over the top. So sometimes, less is more, if you understand what I mean. So we have one of our things pretty much done almost done um, I know it's not perfect but 
let's move on to the next one. So we're going to have another big one of cutting across this. And I'm going to go again with a darker colour. That nice dark shade that we had. And we're going to start, go right, let's just go for it. Let's just cut right into this. You see, just like that, don't be afraid. It's only paint, my friends. It's not going to hurt you if you make a mistake. So then we're cutting into this one. And now you can see it's adding an extra layer on top, isn't it? So we're kind of going on top of one ripple with another ripple. And very gently just put little lines like this going across. Hit and miss, you see? What I do is like a hit and miss. So I don't make a solid line all the way around. It's sort of a hit and miss kind of a thing. You're putting in little bits and you're missing little bits. And look, just keep this simple. Don't try and, you know, don't be trying to do this like a photograph. I find a lot of people that look at something like this, they try to paint it like a photograph and it just doesn't work, I promise you. Um, you become frustrated. It, it can become very stressful. So what I say is just have a bit of fun and make it your own. Just make it completely your own. Don't you try to replicate exactly what you're painting because it will only cause you more and more grief and trouble trying to make it look exactly like a photograph. That's just my opinion. It may be the wrong opinion, but I know we all have different ways of painting. But I like to just keep it simple. Um, paint simple and effectively. Now I'm going to go nice and dark. It's all, This is almost pure black that I'm using now. On my brush. In here for this one. You see that one? And we have another one that kind of comes around like that, don't we? Pure black, little bit of magenta perhaps. And there's a lot of black then coming. A lot of these dark ones. I'm using just paint now, by the way. There's an awful lot of this dark stuff coming from this side here, isn't there? So I'm kind of basically at the moment now, just filling in where I see lots of dark color. And then we adjust it with the ripples, with the lighter colors afterwards. We add lights and we create the shape but I'm just kind of, at the moment now, I'm focusing on putting lots of dark colour down in this corner. Because that's where you can see all the dark colour. Just make everything a little semicircle, like this. Okay. It's simply painting little circles, that's all it is. But you're breaking up the line as you go. Basically, that's that's it. That's it in essence. That's what you're doing. You're just breaking up the line as you go along. Um, so I'm going to put another one, perhaps one or two, just around here. Breaking up this one. So you're almost sort of painting one over the other. Does that make sense? Already this is starting to look like puddles and you know, uh, not puddles. It's starting to look like ripples in the water, isn't it? So when I'm finished now with this big brush, I'll move on to my little round brush. Um, it is a size 
six, a size six round. I'm then going to grow very dark. Let me get some thinners and get some black, some blue, and some magenta. Just those three colours. Go nice and dark with this. Nice and not too thin, it's like a cream, thin, creamy colour. I have a little touch of thinners in the brush just to soften it out and help it come off the brush more easily. And I'm just going to start with a lot of the darks. You can see, especially around the middle, there's a lot of dark colour around there, isn't there? And it's these darks that really show off the ripple. So remember at the beginning I was talking about the darks and the lights. So the darks will really complement the lights and vice versa. The lights will really complement the darks. So when you're putting in darks like this, go really, really strong and really dark. Don't be shy with the colour. Because a lot of people will find if they don't use enough dark in their paintings, the painting looks very washed out. Would you agree? I notice that with a lot of paintings that I see. Um, you know, it's almost like they're afraid to put on too much shadow. And sometimes it just can, it can look very sort of washed out sometimes. And it just doesn't really catch your eye. But if you put in really strong, strong darks, don't be shy. It will make a big difference. And remember, I just keep adding plenty of thinners in this now as well. And I'm going to put little pieces like that, just to indicate that it's going in between the other ripples. Does that make sense? The way it sort of cuts across the ripples underneath. You get these little marks like that, you see? So more black, more blue, and come down here and darken this right down as well. These ones will just sort of soften away into the water. So a couple of little marks, that's all I'm doing. Let me stand back and take a look. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? I think the next step for me now is just to go with my soft blender brush and perhaps let's just try and soften some of these out. Again, following the shape, following the shape of the water, the curve and the ripple, following everything around. Now, you have to be careful with these ones because we have lines going this way and lines going that way. So I'm going to very carefully just soften across some of them. Very gently. I'm barely touching my canvas now with, with my brush when I'm doing this. And finally into these darks. I think sometimes it'll draw a little bit of softening like this really does help, doesn't it? Okay. How's that? So looking at the photograph, looking at the picture, I'm going to go again with a lot darker paint. Black, blue, some magenta, lots of thick paint, and I do want to get just one very dark one down here. And if you want, you can leave some of this dry <clears throat> before you continue on and put extra darks on here. I'm now going to switch to some bright colours. I'm going to take a little phthalo blue, tiny touch of magenta, lots of white. 
And again, this is a bit thicker, but I still have a tiny amount of turpentine in here just from the previous mix. And I'm gonna go and just add a few, I think a touch of blue actually. Tiny, tiny touch of phthalo blue might make all the difference. A very bright whitey blue will really catch the light in paintings like this. So for example, Again, just at the top of some of them like that. You can see now the way that sort of just, that really bright highlight, it just really catches the eye, doesn't it? And it really brings those dark lines to life. I'm going to change my thinners here because it's getting quite dark. When you're dealing with highlights like this, it's a good idea to make sure you have fresh, clean thinners in your, your little jar because it will make all the difference. And turn the tissue over. You see? Just give it a quick turn over. And there we go. So now we have nice, clean thinners again. So back into this light, kind of a bluey shade. We'll take a touch more of phthalo blue. Just a touch. Very carefully. And now we do have another little lovely one here in the middle. I'm going to leave that to last. All right. And you can see as well, my lines aren't perfectly round, are they? Because it's just an impression. I don't want this to be perfect. Not absolutely perfect. It's painting. You know, I know I keep saying this, but leave your painting be a painting. That's probably what I would say to you. Leave it be a painting. Don't try to force it to be something else. And I'm going to just wet some slightly darker blue, a little bit of magenta. So just kind of a slightly dull shade of blue. I'm going to bring down some of that in between some of these as well, just to reiterate some of the lighter color in between some of these ripples take another little bit of that and i can really now see this starting to come to life on the, the canvas <clears throat> i really can it's wonderful and I'm, add, I'm actually even adding my own extra colours into this as well. Remember what I was saying earlier? I'm only using the reference photograph as a guide for um, shapes and direction of shapes. I'm not using it to copy all the colours exactly. That's, that's just not fun. I want to make this my own. Now I'm going to soften these. So I think now all of this needs a little bit of softening before I continue on. Just a little bit here and there, look. Just want to soften some of them out. And inside here, I'm going to soften some of that with the corner of my brush as well. Just going around it very gently. Same here. And I'll stop. Then I'm going to just add some real, very, very black, dark blacky colors. Let me just get my, my paint. So for me, especially with the reflections and the ripples, I can see the secret really up there is to really just put a lot of very rich black in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So wherever I see very dark, strong lines look, just around some of the ripples, I'm going to just put some of them in. And then we'll have some nice lights on top of these in a moment. Now I'm going to do this one in the middle here. So we have a little, I can see a little triangular shape. Like that, and then we have a little ripple that comes all the way around like that. So 
I'm just printing an impression of what I see, my friends. That's all I'm doing. I'm not going to try and copy what I see. I'm painting what I see. I'm not trying to copy what I see. And there's a big difference. Trying to copy what you see means you're painting every single little detail as it is on the photograph. I'm not. I'm just trying to paint what I see. And that's the difference. Paint what you see. I'm putting in darks here now where I don't even see on the reference photographs. I'm just putting in a few little darks here and there as I like. I'm using just paint on its own. Okay, my friends? And you can see I'm building up the layers. I'm building up the darkness bit by bit, layer by layer. So now I'm going to move on to some brights. And I'm going to do this one here. I'm going to grab some white, just white on its own, nothing else. And I can see a nice bright white just there. And in here, We have another little white. I may need to go to a smaller brush in a moment, and I will too. Bring a couple around there, like that. And you see what kind of you see how uh, just by painting a few shapes, it really sort of, sort of springs to life, doesn't it? Isn't it amazing? That's what I love about painting. As you're painting along, and you put a little touch of paint here, a touch of paint there, and suddenly when you stand back and you take a look, you think, wow, you know, I didn't think it was going to turn out like this just by putting a couple of brush strokes here and there. But it does. And what I would say to you as well, is always sit back and take a good look at your work, okay? Always sit back every now and then from a distance and look, and you will see the difference. It's amazing, the difference. So you see those little few highlights now. Okay, they may look a little bit messy, but they do add a bit of a sparkle to what we're painting and i'm going to just pop a little, one or two of those just here and there in some of the lights as well as if it's just catching the sunlight here and there you see what i mean just a few i, I don't want to really go crazy now with this but just a few here and there I think makes a difference. I'll just make this one slightly wider as if it's disappearing off. I'm going to go back into the black again, and I just want to sort of just fix some of this one here. I just want to go a little stronger with some of these fine black lines. We have some fine, fine black lines around here, don't we? Okay. Now, how was that? You can soften some of these with your blender brush if you like. Um, I think I might try and soften a few, just a couple of them, in just a little, little, tiny, tiny bit. I'm just going to use the edge of my brush. Soften them. You can use a smaller brush for this if you like as well, okay? Um, I just think maybe softening some of these in will help give it a slightly softer look. I 
And I think just to catch the eye, I know it's not on the photograph, but just to catch the eye, I might just put one here. You see, just like that. I think a little touch of it just catches the eye. And I think I'm going to leave my reflections as they are, my friends. I might just tidy up the one, that small one. I think I just need to tidy that up just a touch, make it a little more solid here and there, you see, just like that. Um, just to get rid of some of the messiness, I suppose, of it. And, yeah, I think, I think that's good. I'm going to darken as well, just one or two. There. And I just want to fix some, where my, fan, where my little blender brush just sort of flicked the paint out. I'm just going to fix some of those as well, just there. Yeah, I think that's better, isn't it? I'm just refining some of the shapes on this one. Okay. Now, I think that's better. So, my friends, we are done with part one. I'm going to call that part one finished. Um, I'm very happy with that. The fun part is next. The umbrella and the shadow and the reflection. That's the fun part. Lots of rich, rich red. And um, let's see what we can do. So I hope you've enjoyed part one. It's been very, very interesting and very fun to paint. I'm very, very happy with this. Um, let me know what you think. Just keep it simple. Just do a lot. If you like, if you like, you could just paint a lot of circles with a dark color and then put a lot of light with a light color around them some just here and there okay you could just try that and soften it with a soft brush you would be amazed but the important thing with these ripples like this is to remember those fine little highlights at the very end little fine lines here and there and a few fine lines of a dark color very black color just here and there and you would be amazed at how instant it can change on the canvas but don't overdo it just try not to fiddle I always fiddle and it's not a great thing. Anyway, I'll be right back with part two. Red umbrella, finish the painting, frame it, done. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll be right back. See you, my friends. Happy painting.